We're at the booth of Antelope Audio, where Igor Levine is going to tell us something about his video and audio clocks. Years ago I made another clocking product that some of you may know, that's an Art Sync. And uh, based on about 10 or 15 years now of clocking research, this is my next generation of the clocking products. So going with the Art Sync, that was already a very, very nice product, at least I think so. A lot of people really made some very, very good productions and film on it. So when I tried to do next generation, I really needed to do something special, something more different. So to go the next step, I was looking to find something that provides more stable performance, something that provides more stable clocking and less jitter. One of the ways to do that, I realized, is the need to stabilize the crystal oscillator. So one of the things we offer in our clocking products is a thermally stabilized or open controlled crystal oscillator. The idea is to, is to you take the crystal and you actually place it inside a temperature controlled little box. There's a little oven inside the box that keeps the temperature at a constant level. So as a result of stabilizing the temperature, the performance is considerably improved. You get something like 10 to 20 times more stability than you get with a conventional oscillator plus uh, two to four times less jitter. So uh, the interesting thing about the products, we actually make two different, uh, this is showing two of our different master clocks. Um, these products share the same uh, idea. They use oven controlled crystal oscillator and uh, once the oven is, uh, stabilizes the crystal, the only the next level of performance uh, would be to actually go to an atomic clock. So all of our products not only offer the crystal oscillator that's stabilized in the oven, but they also offer an atomic input. So let's uh, try out one of our products. So the basic product that the guys use that are just doing a music production and don't get into film and video is our OCX. The idea is to, uh, it's a very, very simple product. We're trying to design something that people can very intuitively and simply use. So something like this, all you need to do is turn it on. Now you notice that this light is flashing, that's because the oven has not yet reached its operating temperature. So you turn the product on and you simply select the sample rate that uh, you are working. As you notice it goes from 32 kilohertz uh, all the way up to uh, uh, 192. So that's basically um, our statics is a very simple clean user interfaces and uh, physical experience with aluminum knobs. We stay away from complicated double nested menu structures. So for the guys that are doing more than just uh, uh, music and audio and are actually having complicated setups, we have a, 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 our next step is OCX V, where V stands for video. It's basically this unit, uh, the, the W unit, provides the same stability as it uses the same uh, uh, technology of the temperature controlled crystal, plus in addition it works with all the world's videos. Now what does it mean? There's two common standard videos, which is Spelling at DSC, and there is guess what? Whoops, 17 choices, about 17 choices of HD uh, video. So the unit will automatically detect the video coming in. There is no need to indicate what video you have going in. It's, it's very clever and very simple. Once again, with the knobs, you simply select whatever sample rate you want and you let the unit take over and takes care of the rest. In addition to being able to work with video, it also includes a video generator. So that if you have a setup where you got some video going and some audio, you're able to clock your entire uh, system from it. Um, I mentioned earlier that we provide the choice of an atomic clock. So let me mention, talk about uh, the atomic clock that we offer. The atomic clock is based on a, a, an element called rubidium. Rubidium is actually, it, it gets its name from the fact that it's uh, a purplish looking element. It's actually quite active, um, it's, it's quite feisty, it even forms alloys with gold. It's one of the few elements that can bind with gold. But it's actually not radioactive. As in this unit, because people ask me all the time, it's an atomic clock, so there's a visions of atomic apocalypse. But no, basically, it uses atomic resonance. So that's a phenomenon similar to something that's used in microwaves. Um, so it's not, uh, it's not dangerous, it's not radioactive. Um, this unit produces a very stable 10 megahertz clock. Um, the interesting thing, I'm gonna also turn it on. So once we turn the unit on, uh, you'll notice one, one thing, that uh, it also needs to heat up. 
Um, that's uh, one of the things in order for the rubidium to get inside the zone where the electrons begin to resonate, you have to reach its operating uh, temperature. So while the unit is heating up, the, the display uh, is, is showing that it's preparing to meet its operating temperature. So basically, the, uh, the way the systems work is that, that if you're doing basic audio production, you'd get something like OCX. And uh, if you go up to something uh, bigger, then you would consider O6V. And if you're the guy that wants the ultimate performance, then you would get the atomic clock and connect it with either one of the two units. Um, now the interesting thing is that every cl every clock is different. People say, well, what's what's you know? Sometimes I hear people say, I just want to get a clock and throw it on the bottom of my uh, my rack and forget about it. Well, yes, in a way that a, a, a nice master clock should be something you'll be able to forget because it is so stable, it works so well, you don't really need to worry about it. And, you know, the clicks and pops and, and malfunctions that come from unstable clocking performance. But the fact of the matter is the clock does influence the way your converter sounds, the way your audio sounds. So it's something that's very, very important. Because I see it all the time, people are spending lots of money on very expensive systems, and they don't think about their clocking. But that's completely absurd. It's like a house with no foundation. You may build a very nice house, but if there is no foundation, if the clock is not stable, that there is no point to building that building, it's just going to collapse. So one of the things you guys should do if you get a chance, get different clocks out there and listen to them. You'll notice that there is a difference. And I have been working in this area for about 15 years now and I know that there is uh, all of our manufacturers and I know uh, uh, I know all the guys that are making clocks and some of them are my friends. We all use slightly different technique that affects the way that the clock sounds. So if you get a chance, get my clocks, get uh, Big Band, get some other clocks and see how you like the way they sound. Thanks for uh, taking your time.